בוקר טוב לכולכם לכנס שנתי ללימודים גרמנים כאן בישראל. אני אירנה אאוה בן דוד, מנהלת מכון לאופק, ועליי הבוקר להציג שתי הדוברים בפאנל הראשון. זה קודם כל דוקטור גיאוק ולנדי, הוא סגן שגריר גרמניה כאן בישראל, ואחר כך יושב ראש שלנו פרופסור גלי לישחה, שכולכם בטח מכירים. בבקשה, הצליח בקום. שלום, בוקר טוב, חברים וחברות, אני יוק ולנדי, סגן שגריר גריר בשגרירות גרמניה בתל אביב. אני אבל נונדלס קונטיניו עם אנגלית, אם אני יכול. פרסט אוף אול, מני מני תנקס פור האבינג מי, ואני אסן גריטינגס פרום דה אמבסדר, מי בוס שטפן זייבט. who unfortunately couldn't make it today because as maybe some of you have seen it on, on Twitter or on the social media, he just left the country for, um, uh, for a few days for off um, uh, and uh, some holidays back in, back in Germany. So um, dear Professor Schacher, dear Dr. Auer Ben David, uh, dear honorable scholars, ladies and gentlemen, um, language, culture, society is the theme that has been chosen for this year's German Studies Conference, and indeed, it is a wonderful starting point for a few words. So let me begin with language, or more specifically, the German language in Israel. Well, when we talk, when you talk probably on a daily basis about the German language in Israel, we cannot do so without mentioning and including the historical and cultural context. On the one hand, German is the language of the Jews who immigrated from German-speaking countries, a language of science and literature. But on the other hand, and I can see it uh, when I just look at the entanglement of my own family, um, Germany is also the language of perpetrators and death. And this dilemma is part of the perception of the German language in Israel, and it remains so, even if Israelis might have a different approach to the German language today. So let me underline one thing. The fact that the German lessons are now being offered in Israeli public schools The fact that we have scholars in Israel dedicated to the German language is indeed a miracle that we are well aware of and that we do not take for granted. Learning a new language, and this is something you work on every day, means seeing the world through a different culture, using different brain cells. And it is not just about learning vocabulary and grammar. It also means that you are able to express one, yourself in a language of the other, that you open yourself up to new insights and to a new culture and also to emotional dimensions of communication. This brings me to the second part of today's theme, which is culture and the cultural relations and the following questions. <coughs> How can we, if everything is so complicated and if language is so important and if it, it makes a difference if you say one thing in one language or in a different language, how can we even create the basis for international exchange and understanding when everything is so complicated and so, so intertwined? I mean, here in Israel, here in Israel we see it um, every day how the same facts are told via contracting political narratives let alone international politics. So even here in Israel, people look at the same fact and read it with different narratives. Um, how could you then even create international understanding if you do not have people who speak the same language in the same room? Well, cultural relations and education policy addresses these questions. It forms what we call the third pillar of German foreign policy, alongside political and economic relations with different countries. It is something very important for our daily work at the embassy. If it works, this kind of cultural policy, cultural relations can help to diffuse or even prevent crises and conflicts around the world. What matters is that we remain in dialogue, that we maintain our common ground with others. The dialogue, especially between Germany and Israel, On the other hand, it's multifaceted, and there is an in-depth cooperation ongoing on many levels. It is one of the greatest gifts and the result of hard work that our countries have become the unique partners we are today. And just to give you a few examples, and this goes on on a daily basis, 
members of our parliaments, the Knesset and the Bundestag, work closely together and since 2008 they regularly meet for intergovernmental consultations. German companies and industrial Israeli startups de develop new products together. We just had a big delegation here at the University for the Israeli Cyber Week. Researchers from our countries are working together to tackle the pressing questions of, qu questions of time. Cooperation between German and Israeli universities is extremely lively and active. And youth and cultural exchanges between the two countries have continued to expand over the past, past few years. So one way to bridge this gap of communication, how can there be understanding if people speak a different language, might just be by trying it on an everyday basis and by bringing people together again and again and again. And this thriving social exchange that takes place between Germany and Israel helps us to understand one another better. And if we do so, even if we do not speak the same language, at least we can create a basis for mutual understanding. In this context, then let me say a few words about the third team, society. Well, when we talk about German-Israeli relations and when we talk about encounters between German-Israel society, we of course have to talk about the Shoah and the pain and responsibility that comes with it as well. The pain over what human beings are capable of doing to other human beings, the grief and the memory of all those who were deprived of all dignity, persecuted, tortured, humiliated and murdered, will forever remain part of Germany's identity. Those wounds will never heal. And on a personal note, I can say after two years in Israel for a German diplomat, nothing is more important to witness this um, on a yearly basis when you participate at different acts of memory, especially during, during Yom HaShoah. <coughs> However, as part of the lessons drawn from history, it is also important to take responsibility for the future. And I believe it is therefore on us to understand and communicate the importance of seeing and meeting people as human beings, regardless of religion, color, race, culture, or origin. Our societies can only survive if we respect, tolerance, mutual recognition, and appreciation prevail. With regards to the Jewish people, the German federal government has made a clear commitment in this regard. Our fight against anti-Semitism, racism, discrimination and exclusion is firmly enshrined in the conviction that the dignity of every human being is untouchable and that universal human rights are the guiding principle for our action. This is, from our point of view, the only way to prevent the terrible events of the Shoah from ever happening again. And therefore, last year, Germany adopted its first national strategy against anti-Semitism and for the promotion of Jewish life. As we say it in German, Nationale Strategie gegen Antisemitismus und für jüdisches Leben. Ladies and gentlemen, at the same time, and this is just another side of the same endeavor to build bridges, not to forget the past and to create understanding that endures over generations, our countries keep um, working together on the creation of a German-Israeli youth office for youth exchange, an institution that might create even deeper bonds of understanding and cooperation between us. One of, certainly one of the, the most important projects this embassy here in, in Tel Aviv has. So, ladies and gentlemen, I gave you a few insights on how we perceive um, the, the themes um, of your conference this year on cultural, on, on identity, on society, um, from the perspective of a German diplomat in, in Israel. It comes with a lot of very specific endeavors and tasks it, uh, it is something that we work on, on a daily basis, and that, um, that in a way um, uh, helps us to guide us through the, through the jungle of, of, the Israeli, of the Israeli domestic politics, which is not always so, so easy to understand for, for an outsider. Um, 
but it entails plenty of possibilities for exchange, for connections and collaborations. And I'm curious about all the ideas and angles that you as German studies research community will present during this conference. I would like to conclude by thanking the Leo Beck Institute and all its partners for organizing this important conference and wish you fruitful discussions and inspiring encounters. Many thanks. To the rabbi. Good morning, Dr. Valendi, dear Jörg, for deine schöne, wichtige Wörter, in der Tat. Um, dear colleagues and friends, uh, Karl Maskele, as we say, uh, we are delighted to open the, the annual conference of the German studies in Israel, and, and to greet and, and to thank you all for this gathering and for your academic and intellectual devotion, and for your contribution to the research and study of German and German-Jewish history and culture. It is a vision that we share, according to which this meeting, the conference, is about to represent today an excellent, advanced, engaged research in major disciplines of German studies associated with history and philosophy, literature and the arts, cultural studies, gender and sociology. The idea to engage the field of German studies as a multidisciplinary sphere attest to our concern regarding the diversities of traditions, theories, and methods in research while performing critical progressive conceptions of our own vocation, beruf or mishlach yad or tirtzu shlichut, as scholars and students of the humanities and the social sciences. The main concern of this gathering, if I may, is to share and to discuss new approaches, new findings, revisions, and reviews of major issues in German and German-Jewish studies. The, the Neuheiten, uh, the renewals, the original path-breaking events in research, however, are always associated, measured, with tradition, bodies of knowledge, conversations, achievements of the past. Even our futuristic, most futuristic views regarding research in the humanities are always anchored in the opening of traditions, in past continuous. Progress in research of the humanities, a kidma or a itkadmut, is always associated with a step back, as if Fortschritt heißt auch ein Schritt zurück. So attention, or better, a dialectic of time conception is essential for all of our disciplines of German studies as being anchored in certain historicities in sense of historical time or, as we say, of tradition, Masorit. This perception, this perception of the new, Chadash, as being of the past or from the past namely as an act of revealing or gathering, bringing into light what which was already there, doesn't apply necessarily a traditionalist, orthodox, or dogmatic views of studies, you may think. But rather, it may signify a progressive view that doesn't deny the gravity of the past, its unfulfilled potentials, its, as we said, futuristic possibilities, as it's shown immer and noch nicht. Gvar tamid perusho gam adain lo. This view of studies, which in certain Hebrew Aramaic traditions, Talmudic ones, carries with it radical, somewhat even messianic implications, gains, as we know, different meaning once we discuss the leftovers and futuristic of German Jewish studies. For, as one learns immediately from the program of this conference, in Israel, German studies are very often associated with Jewish studies. If not by its 
implied topics in many of the sessions, or by its comparative concern between Germany and Israel, between German and Jewish histories, or local approaches or perspective, then by the very fact of speaking Hebrew, German history becomes of Jewish resonance. As you say, you know, it's something about the language that already creates a cultural implication. This is not alone to argue about a strong local Jewish Hebrew interest and concern reclaiming German studies in Israel. So one, once we look on our programs of, of studying and research, there is a certain orientation in our department to bring together German studies and Jewish studies. It's not alone to acknowledge the cultural and political work of Hebrew, what the very fact of speaking Hebrew creates, translating and therefore articulating different things in German, or doing different things with German. There is no other way to do German studies, in my view, in Israel-Palestine without acknowledging the histories of this place. For example, we are gathering now in Ramat Aviv on campus where a Palestinian village, Sheikh Munis, used to be until 1948 war. So German studies already became local, right? resonating certain histories of this, of this sphere and place or without acknowledging the biographies and life and concern of our researchers, colleagues, and students. What was once called proper German history was not free from certain denial of those historical contexts, forms of life, gravities of the past, and concerns of the future being articulated in Hebrew or in programs of German studies, German history is here. Indeed, one may provide us with an excellent original research made in Israel on Bismarck or on Goethe, or on the Second Reich, or on the migration and ethnic diversities in Kreuzberg, 36, without much concern regarding what is Jewish, indeed, or without taking into consideration what stood and stand at stake between Israelis and Palestinians. We can make a good research like that. Yet, a certain reflection, even a minor one, an intervention in a sense of shibush, even unnoticed, even unaware, in the so-called proper German, an accent, perhaps voiceless, interrupting and even resisting the domination of major conceptual framework, invading, for instance, the historical conception of Germanistic, which is my own field, interfering within it with Hebrew or Yiddish, Russian, Turkish, Arabic, Persian languages of uh, Jewish migrations to Israel, provide us with alterations, variations, pronunciations, which are not unfaithful to the conditions of the reality of this conference. It was a dialectic sentence, right? But see what I mean. But without echoing, um, not simply Jewish background or Israeli background um, in our German uh, studies uh, project, we are not enough faithful, so to say, to the, where we are coming from and what we are going to. So German studies in Israel, as much as being local, claims as much as being local, kehol she'i mekomit, claims its worldliness, weltlichkeit, olamiyot, so being in the world, its historicity, its being here and now. So as much as we are local, we turn more and more global, or being in the world. This is the argument I'm trying to convince you with. The vision and, and the program of our gathering seems thus to address the challenge of studying, again, research and, and teaching, not without the attention to historical and political forms of life. These two belong, I may think, to the idea of a vivid, multilingual, thoughtful, happy symposium as ours. So thank you very much for accepting the invitation um, and for being here this morning. And with your permission, a few words of gratitude. First and foremost, for my excellent dedicated colleagues at the Leobeck Institute of Jerusalem, Dr. Irena Ben David, Dr. Sharon Livne, and Ms. Uh, uh, Raya Michaeli, for you know, doing so much, uh, not only for this conference, for, for German and German Jewish studies uh, in Israel. I'm, I'm delighted to work with you. We would also like to, to, to thank the German-Israeli Foundation for their support of the conference, especially thanking Dr. Eric Zierman, who is with us this, this day, its director. 
We also say thank you to the Walter uh, de Greuter Publishing House for the sponsoring of, of the session uh, uh, today. Todaraba also we may say to the members of the academic community or committee who served this year and contributed to the making of the program. Dr. Amir Engel is with us this morning, Dr. Daniel Mala from Haifa, uh, Professor Isra uh, uh, Ishai Landa from the University of Israel, I didn't see him. But I'm, 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 I, I think he will join us today. Sharon Livne and Magister Yarden Bensu. So it is also an, an, an opportunity to, 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 to say something about our house, the Anu or Museum of Bedat Futsot, as we uh, remember, for, um, uh, for uh, hospitality, and also to mention that there's a, a German Jewish roof, Maslul Yudi Germany, here, sponsored by the German ambassador, and we're very thankful. Uh, for, for making it possible uh, while re rebuilding the, the, the Anu Museum and for the, the Ludwig Rosenthal Stiftung uh, for uh, supporting this conference and the Marcel Chaniski Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Michal Bondi, for um, helping this um, happening. Last words, also opportunity to thank our dear colleague, Dr. Sharon Gordon. I didn't see Sharon here yet, but nevertheless, I will mention her. Um, who, you know, Few of us still recall the, the, the contribution she made with others many years ago in shaping the, the what they called, or what was called, the Forum for German uh, History in Israel. Its legacies, this conference uh, uh, wish, wishes to, to continue, indeed with, with new forms, intensities, and orientations. And for as uh, scholars of German studies, they, we know well, Past continuous, right, implies progression, even in, in, that, in that sense. And new beginnings, or fortschritte, always grounded in what was already given. So we are very much uh, appreciating the, the, the possibility and, 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 and the opportunities to, to continue something that started more than 10 years ago in creating the forum. This conference, if I may say, tried to articulate this experience in Hebrew during the day, in English too, in a few of the sessions. So I wish you, I wish us all good luck uh, today, enjoying full program with double uh, sessions, lectures and, and discussions in good in, in free spirits. Thank you. And I now I will ask Sharon to assist us a little bit with the plan of the session. Sharon. אז בוקר טוב, ואני שמחה לראות את כולכם, גם את המכונים המשתתפים וגם את המשתתפים המשתתפים. Uh, תודה על שיתוף הפעולה. אז יש לנו היום, אנחנו במקביל, ארבעה סשנים במקביל, ואני רק אגיד אותם כדי שנוכל להתפצל. יש לנו יום ארוך, יושבי הראש יהיו קצת uh, uh, קשוחים, אז uh, אנחנו רוצים שתהיינה גם הפסקות כדי שנוכל גם uh, לנשום, גם לאכול וגם לפטפט אחד עם השנייה, אז זה תמיד טוב. Uh, אז כאן באולם זאבי יתקיימו המושבים הבאים. טוב, הטכנאים בדרך, אבל תכף יסדרו גם את זה. הנאורות ומעבר לה יתקיים כאן. דמוקרטיה וזהות יהודית יתקיים כאן. ויימר ומבשריה יתקיים כאן. וג'וז את קרוס וורד גם יקיים כאן, מה שאומר שבאולם השני, בכרונוספירה, שאני עכשיו אצא וכל מי שירצה ללכת לשם אני אוכל ללוות אותו, יתקיים המושב אליקים וצאצאיהם, תרבות וזיכרון, ויימר ומבשריה, וסליחה, מההתחלה, אליקים וצאצאיהם, תרבות וזיכרון, קריאה חוזרת על שבעה ביקורת ועיוורון בספרות יהודית גרמנית ופרגמנט ואיזוטייפ שאריות תרבות יהודית אוסטרית נשכחת. אז בואו נתפצל והמשך יום נעים לכולם. <עוד> 